recently fortunate to receive funding from the USDA CPPM program to work on spotted wing drosophila, codling moth, and brown marmorated stink bug. Um, the first and last of those pests, of course, are serious invasive pests that are causing a lot of problems for fruit growers um, across the country at this point. Codling moth is more of an old favorite and one that, that we've had a lot of experience with. So the basic premise of our attract and kill work is that we, uh, we were inspired by um, delta methrin treated insecticide nets that are used in the tropics to help mitigate things like malaria and dengue fever. So in those systems, the human is the attractant. You've got this attractive warm body inside a mosquito net. Um, the mosquito net's treated with delta methrin. So when the mosquitoes land on the mosquito net, instead of finding that warm body to feed on, they find a toxic load and they die. So we thought we could maybe do this for some of the fruit pests because we have a good understanding of um, sex pheromones and some plant semiochemicals that are attractive for specific fruit pests. We don't want to put a cage over the entire tree though. So instead what we did was we got um, some nylon fabric. We sew up little pouches that are about five inches by five inches. Um, we treat them with a heavy load of delta methrin insecticide. And then we put a semiochemical lure of some kind inside. So that might be a um, codling moth um, um, pheromone lure like you'd use in a trap. It could be a Japanese beetle pheromone lure, semiochemical lure that you put in a trap. It might be apple cider vinegar and uh, brewer's yeast, which you might use for spotted wing drosophila. So the basic premise of this is the, the insect, the target insect is attracted to the surface, they touch it, and then the contact active insecticide kills them. So we've had pretty good success with this system so far and good proof of concept data for oriental fruit moth and for a Japanese beetle. Um, this, this project is allowing us to expand into some other areas. Um, we have done some preliminary work in advance of that grant for spotted wing drosophila, and we're ready with a prototype device to test this summer. Um, we've not quite as far along with brown marmorated stink bug, but we do plan on doing some field work this summer. Um, we did run a small experiment last summer with codling moth, and we faced our first um, real sort of research challenge where our um, attract and kill device did not perform as well as a mating disruption solution, so like an isomate or a twin tube mating disruption solution. Um, so this next year we're going to be really focusing on the behavioral aspects of codling moth in relation to this, um, probably using a lot of field videography to see do moths actually touch our device, if they do touch it, how long do they stay in, in contact with it. That's likely what we'll do with brown marmorated stink bug as well. So the benefits of an attract and kill device I think are, are somewhat obvious. But really what, what it comes down to is rather than putting a toxicant across a broad swath of crop, we're putting it on a small device that never comes in contact with the crop and insects are um, drawn to that and, and touch that and die. Um, we haven't seen a lot of um, non-target insects touching our devices in field videography, but that's probably likely gonna be very dependent on the type of semiochemical used and the timing of when they're put out. In my personal view, I see this attract and kill as a natural evolution of the mating disruption concept. And as such, I'm not going to uh, tell people that I think that this is going to be a silver bullet that's going to solve a particular pest management issue. Um, however, I feel like, much like mating disruption, I think it could make managing some of our key pests much easier. And so codling moth is a great example of that. That's really the best success story of mating disruption. Growers that use um, codling moth mating disruption don't spray nearly as much for codling moth as growers who don't. They don't have to because they can maintain the populations at a very low controllable level. Our hope is, is that, that attract and kill will do the same thing for these new pernicious pests like spotted wing drosophila and brown marmorated stink bug.